The Four Hour Work Week is one of the best selling books which talk about leveraging the power of other people, mostly through technology, to free yourself from the rat race of having to work for money and instead having money work for you. So if you ever want to know how it is possible to make a full time income working just a few hours per week, you will definitely see this book as one of the most recommended books. About the book. Tim's objective is to show you both how to design your ideal lifestyle and how to get there. He gives eye-opening insights, driving them home with interesting stories, resource lists and detailed guides. There is, however, a catch. Tim Ferriss offers what is, quite frankly, a reality that is very alien to most of us. As such, it is easy to dismiss the reality he is trying to bring to your attention as either unrealistic or unattainable. Tim has split the book into four sections, with a total of 16 chapters distributed within them. Here are the sections, stroke, steps. Step 1. D is for definition. Step 2. E is for elimination. Step 3. A is for automation. Step 4. L is for liberation. Step 1. D is for definition. The most important thing you could do to turn your life around is to define your goals and objectives. Tim Ferriss makes it clear that the primary thing that separates those who are genuinely wealthy, debt-free, and in true control of their time, is that they made the effort to define their goals, and have since committed to meeting them as efficiently. Tim Ferriss states that to truly boost efficiency with regard to meeting your goals, you need to delegate. Always strive to do the minimum necessary for maximum effect. This doesn't mean to cut corners, it means that you shouldn't waste time on tasks that have a low payoff. Step 2. E is for elimination. Here Tim Ferriss urges you to forget time management and the results by volume approach. This is simply not effective. It is possible to do a lot of work each day, but really end up doing very little if prioritization is not in place. Throughout the section, the author makes it clear that being busy, more often than not, involves avoiding the more important, more uncomfortable activities. You need to eliminate the chaff and only work on your prime priorities. And this is only possible if you take care of step one first. With defined goals, you are able to define the activities that should take top priorities, discard the rest, and only focus on the important tasks. Step 3. A is for automation. Delegation is your friend. In fact, it just might be your best friend. Use it. Delegation leads to automation, as tasks and activities are completed without necessarily having you on the ground. This automation will lead to reduction, which will free up time without cutting down on productivity. However, never delegate unless you have thoroughly defined what the task is, how it should be done, and the results you expect. The other key lesson Tim explores is this one. It is wrong to automate a task that can be eliminated. If it can be eliminated, then eliminate it. Step 4. L is for liberation. All the steps above lead to this. You need to zero in on the 20% of your belongings that you use 80% of the time and eliminate the rest. In simpler terms, your focus should be on the 20% of activities that yield 80% of the result. Anything that does not fit in this category can be delegated. This will allow you to be less attached to things that don't add significant value and to be freer in how you go about life. Automate as much as you can. Make an effort to delegate to the best of your ability. The goal is true liberation. If something cannot be defined or acted upon, it is best to forget it. Tim teaches that thorough simplification is what leads to true freedom. Key takeaways. Whether you read the entire book or you don't, I want you to ask yourself these three questions. One, how would I get my work done tomorrow if I only had two hours per day and I only had two hours per week? Write down a maximum of two mission critical elements and test them by asking, would I be pleased with my day if only they took place? What will the consequences be if they don't? Your answers will help you realize just how valuable time is so that you don't waste it on unimportant things. Talking of not wasting time on unimportant things, make sure you come up with your not-to-do list. You can include such things as web browsing, email shuffling, status meetings, etc. Tim Ferriss makes it clear that no is a tool that you need to wield frequently. Free up your time by saying no to low-consequence work, especially if it will take up a lot of your time. You do not need to write a thesis for your excuses either. Keep them vague for the most part.